The year is 1919. C.H. Wills cashed in his Ford stock shares for $1.6 million and left Ford Motor Company to pursue making a car of his very own. While at Ford, Wills was responsible for making the iconic Ford logo and introducing Henry Ford to Vernadium Steel, which was a big reason for the Model T's durability and a reason why so many survive to this very day. Wills would build his company on the St. Clair River in Marysville, Michigan, just north of Detroit. The company was called C.H. Wills and Company. Wills was a perfectionist, and his first car would come out in 1921. And Vernadium Steel wasn't going to cut it anymore. He came up with a stronger steel called Molybdium Steel. And I apologize. I know I butchered that. The car was expensive at around $3,000, which would be equivalent to you spending $52,009.24 in the year 2024. Just to give you perspective, that was in the realm of the three Ps territory, Packard, Pierce, Arrow, Peerless. And the cars themselves, they wasn't that level of prestige, but under the hood sat an engine designed by Wills himself, the engine was years ahead of its time. The engine was heavily based on a 718 cubic inch displacement Hispano Suiza V8, an unsung hero of World War I that was used in aircraft overhead cam design. Will's engine was a 265 cubic inch displacement 4.3 liter V8 that used not one, but two overhead camshafts that were gear-driven, much like the Hispano Suiza, but it used bevel gears instead of straight-cut gears on the Suiza. The beveled gears make the engine smoother and quieter during operation. The block was cast as one piece. The heads do not detach from the block. So you don't have head gasket issues, but if you needed to perform a valve job, the only way to get to the valves was through the bottom. The cylinder banks were angled at 60 degrees for absolute smoothness with single camshaft over each bank of cylinders. The crankshaft rolls on seven main bearings and drove a single king shaft, which controlled the camshafts and cooling fan. The cooling fan had an automatic clutch which would disengage over 40 miles per hour when the fan wasn't needed anymore. The valve configuration was also that of an overhead valve configuration with two valves per cylinder. Exhaust comes out the bottom, water goes in the top. It's important to note that this engine doesn't use a single chain for anything. Everything is gear driven. This engine was said to be 10 years ahead of its time. 265 cubic inch displacement, overhead cam, overhead valve V8, 4.3 liters. It's good for 67 horsepower at 2,800 RPM with an estimated 132 pound feet or 178 newton meters in or around a thousand rpm with a bore of 3.25 inches and a stroke of four inches the years this engine was used was between 1921 through 1923. Will St. Clair was offered in two wheelbase configurations, 121 inches and 127 inches in four body styles, five passenger touring, four passenger roadster, four passenger coupe, sedan with auxiliary seats. It would turn out that Henry Ford would be right about the general public not wanting to buy a fast, sophisticated, complicated car that most garages could not work on. Coupled with the fact that Wills was a perfectionist, borderline OCD with cars, oftentimes he would halt his own assembly lines to make very small corrections and changes to the cars, which would delay production and cost the company revenue. The V8 would turn out to be too costly and too complicated to build, but that's not the end of the story. Wills would design an overhead cam in line six, 4.5 liters, that would be capable of reaching speeds of 75 miles per hour in 1925. But as they say, that's another engine episode for another day. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have, and these may or may not be in the same price point or category, but which one would you rather have? 1921 Willis Knight or 1921 Will St. Clair or 
1921 Stern's Night. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, 1921 Jordan or 1921 Will St. Clair or 1921 Hopmobile. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. I don't say that for self-worth. I just say that if you post a comment on here, I will definitely read it. And this is way more than a car channel. This is a car community of fun-loving individuals that love classic cars. If you have Facebook and would like to see the Facebook group, it will be linked in the description below. It gives you the opportunity to share your ride stories, experiences, anything you'd like to share, you can share on there that's car related. If you'd like to reach me and you don't have Facebook, send me an email. The link will be in the description or on the homepage. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. I love the information that you guys share. I especially love the stories. Until next time, toodaloo!